the transaction log concept is something that you're going to see in a lot of services from Microsoft. Exchange does it, SQL Server does it, heck, you know, Wins does it, all that stuff. But what'll happen is, is that we want the information to get to the hard drive as quickly as possible. And when you're dealing with a database, the database is random access. It bounces around and bounces around and bounces around. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to take our transaction. Let's say it's a write transaction, because read transactions we're not writing to the database. So we're doing a, a write transaction. We will first take this and put it into RAM. So this is our random access memory, and that makes it nice and responsive. But the computer knows, hey, you know, I'm living on borrowed time here. This is not non-volatile RAM which means that if my system loses power, that transaction is lost. And we haven't committed it to the database, we have to roll it back and the information's gone. So what it does is it writes it into a transaction log. This transaction log is written sequentially, which means that as I write information to it, it's just going to be tacked on to the bottom. And then the next transaction tacked on to the bottom. And then the next transaction is tacked on to the bottom. Then, when the computer has time, it will take these logs and it will actually commit them to the database itself. And it uses what's called a checkpoint file to say, yep, I've gone ahead and entered that transaction, I've entered that transaction, I've entered that transaction, but I haven't had time to enter this bottom transaction. When I do my backup, if it's a full backup, It'll go ahead and commit any uncommitted transactions to the database. Also, by committing these transactions, we mark them as having been committed. And when we back up the database, we delete the transaction logs. They just go away. Simple as that. Now, in some types of backups, for example, on these transaction log backups, instead of going through and backing up the database, we're going to assume that we already have a full backup. Then when we do the backup to save time, we just back up the transaction log. Because the transaction log has all of the transactions that have occurred since the last time we've done a full backup. So in order to recover, I just recover the database. Then I replay my transaction logs and it rebuilds the database and we are good to go. And this happens in a lot of different applications. Like I said, Exchange does it. SQL Server does it, SharePoint does it, um, all of that. So you can just go in if you'd like and you can uh, back up the transaction logs to be able to go through and pull that stuff in.